So artificial intelligent hardware does not really look like artificial intelligent hardware anymore. And that's because some Stanford researchers are now controlling what's called the photonic microchip with color. Yeah, I literally mean color, like red, blue, yellow, actual colors, because colors represent different wavelengths of light, so they're controlling it with light. And look, if photons aren't your thing, which you can't really trust them, the particle duality and uncertainty, all that stuff, we're also talking about neuromorphic wetware. You know, like hardware, but it's more like squishy and wet, like our brains. Yeah, there's new ways to train AIs that look basically like biological systems. And when I say they're like the brain, I literally mean they're grown in a substrate, where the equivalent of neurons learn to attach to one another and you actually control the neural network with electrical signal spikes like the same way our brains work which made it so i could like barely sleep last night because it was like whoa that's gonna be like maybe very human i don't know I'm, I'm still thinking about how human that actually is we'll get to that in a minute first we need to talk star trek everybody loves the communicator most interesting could this be human joke number 663? Well, some big fancy pants over at Apple left to create a new hardware company, and that's the vision they have for Humane. Yeah, they're like stealthily building this like super secret, everybody signs an NDA kind of piece of hardware. And it now has an official name. It's called the Humane Pin. You know, just like a pin you would collect at Disneyland, like a pin. Now, conceptually, I'm not skeptical because I think that that Star Trek, like, Beat me up, Scotty. Like, that kind of makes sense. And if we have AI on our body, if it's in the pocket, there's no camera to see around us. And like, it seems like AI would need to see our environment, probably like a body cam, maybe glasses with a little camera in them. But look, we're not gonna all just be like holding our phone out 24 seven every time we wanna use AI. I think we are gonna need something where we can put our hands down and it keeps looking forward for us and it can do all the AI stuff. But I'm a little skeptical about the time frame. Like my guess is this kind of company in five years sort of shuts down. They shed all their patents. Apple probably picks them up. And then two years after that, we see like an, a new Apple Watch update where it can like be pinned to your shirt and it has all their technology once it's all flushed out in it. But for you short-term believers, here's what we know about this Star Trek beam me up doohickey thing. The Humane Pin is a wearable projector that functions as a non-physical smartphone. Now here's the only public demo they did at TED this year. And of course there's a lot of oohs and ahs because these are some like top Apple designers that left to go like revolutionize hardware. But at the end of the day, because the device is sort of simple, what it's depending on is a whole lot of artificial intelligence. You know, to figure out what to project, to calculate where your hands are on other things in your environment, to translate calls, become a voice assistant, and kind of do everything that we're imagining down the future Siri is going to do one day. Now, the integrated design has cameras that scan the environment, and I think that's necessary, like the same way a Tesla has to look around and navigate. I feel like some kind of device has to sit there on your body looking forward. There's some hidden sensors for activation. They're not totally clear on this, but I guess it's like a tap, or maybe there's a little touchpad type thing. It's got a speaker on it. What I think would be cool, though, is if it had little headphone pocket you know what I mean like that'd be convenient because I was gonna carry this thing around anyways but the big wow moment was when he like projected onto his hand which could also be the counter or wall or whatever you want to interact on and we agree sorry this is my wife I'm gonna have to get this hello hey, hey Bethany how's it going which illustrated this vision for a future where we don't can I look at screens anymore. Like there isn't the TikTok scroll because I guess we just project it out in front of us on the wall. Now from the AI side of it, they're trying to get it to be a little bit GPT-like so you can ask questions and get answers. In the demo, he recommends a place to buy a gift or ask for personal health advice. Where can I find a gift for my wife before I have to leave tomorrow? Vancouver's Granville Island is a lively shopping district. That's an incredibly simple response for a very complex query. Which I would say is the most interesting part of the presentation because when he held up this candy bar, it was like, mm -mm, no, don't do it. No, don't move, don't move it closer to your mouth. Don't do it. So it looks like the future of AI means less candy bars. Okay, let's talk about this cool colored light Stanford artificial intelligence system. It's insane. So Anastasia in tech just released this new video that explains how a new generation of hardware is going to allow scientists to train an artificial intelligence system literally 
at light speed. So in this video, Breakthrough in Photonics, she breaks down how a photonic microchip actually uses light to transmit information. Light is the fastest information carrier in the universe, light speed, literally. And it dissipates less heat and energy, less power, less heat. Those are big problems with current microchips. Also, what's really crazy, the reason this video really stood out to me, it was like a big aha moment, is when I learned that these photonic chips can actually carry out different calculations on different wavelengths, which means different colors. Different spectrum of light is a different color to our eyes. Yeah, so that's like a real game changer because I always think that you can only send so one type of electron to adjust a logic gate, but different bands of light could actually be adjusting different parts of it in parallel. Like it was a little over my head, but I was like, how is this not a thing? Like, why, have, why don't we have these already? So she explains, it's because back propagation is a different algorithm that uses usually calculus, and you have to basically push information through a neural network to give a prediction. You check how off it is, you call that the error, and then you, from there, make a mathematical calculation of how to readjust all the weights and biases so the machine can get smarter next time you put stuff in the front. But then she pointed out how the big problem has been with light you don't always have the ability to compute forward and backward, right? Like if you put in a picture of a cat and say, what animal is this? And it says it's a dog, then you have to measure the error and then go back in and fix all those weights and biases so that the next time it's more accurate at predicting the cat. The backwards part, which is an algorithm called backpropagation, has been hard to implement using light. So the breakthrough was achieved when the Stanford team came up with a hybrid chip. So this chip is both photonic and an electronic chip. So now after doing a bunch of super complicated stuff, they can now measure the light going forward and backwards. Like I have this image of two mirrors and you put a flashlight in and the like photons are just bouncing back and forth. Like as quickly as you can adjust whatever you need to adjust with your kind of computation of error, like you can just send it back and forth. Like this is really interesting. Like imagine if you and I could learn from our errors at light speed. Do you guys remember that big chip company named Intel? Well, like I know they've kind of fallen off the radar, but they're sort of like the little engine that could. They just keep chugging along in their own little thing and they're so far behind, nobody pays attention to them anymore. But in a new article, Anna Rood VK explains how poor little Intel is giving AI hardware everything that it's got. So Intel has gotten out of the PC game, they're leaving that to the OEMs, and they're now going after that sweet, sweet AI cash. Now, despite these efforts, Intel has lost almost 70% of their stock value since 2021. Even as their competitors, AMD and Nvidia, have like gone to the moon. But despite the uphill battle, a $2 billion purchase of an AI hardware company might be the beginning of a turnaround. The company is called Habana Labs, and they have a chip called the Habana Gadi 2. And it has shown some promise. It actually might be even faster than Nvidia's A100 chips, which are common in AI workloads. And with an upcoming third generation of the chip, which we'll have to see how fast that is, but it could be a marked improvement. Intel is slowly gaining momentum. But like, here's my opinion. If I was the CEO of Intel, which I will never be, unfortunately, here's what I would do. I think if Intel really wants to skate to where the puck is going, this is a great time because they could retool their entire system. There's nothing left to cannibalize anymore and build around AI hardware that's designed by AI algorithms. Now from a high level, I wouldn't exactly know what that'd look like, but something super modular, something where AI software is where you start, and it says, I want this kind of a chip and I wanna be able to arrange it in these types of ways because we don't know what the best chip's gonna look like. Each year it might change, each week it might change. How do you build a really flexible assembly line, a really flexible system where AI can keep testing, learning from its feedback, and getting those changes into hardware as fast as possible? Because if you can build that flywheel system faster than the other guys, by the time it actually gets moving and they're making these gobs of money and everything's going great until your AI comes up with a few little niche things that make it so much better that nobody can not use it. Those guys, NVIDIA, AMD, they would always have to be like slowly tooling their whole thing. They might not have a flexible assembly line like you could start building right now. Now, of course, Intel stock would probably look terrible for five or six years until this all got like up and running. But once it did, maybe that would be the big comeback, the big 10 year comeback even. But of course, I'm not the first to have this vision. Listen to what AMD AMD's CEO said about how AI will be designing hardware in the future. So AMD's CEO is a woman named Lisa Su, and she said that hardware design is increasingly intertwined with artificial intelligence, and that the future of the chip market will be dominated by AI-assisted design processes due to their capacity to optimize for performance and energy efficiency. And she highlighted how AMD is already sold on this vision for the future. AMD is experimenting now with AI design processes. And even though it has 
hasn't made it all the way to the manufacturing stage yet, they're showing how it will have huge potential. She even predicted that future AI engineers may be replaced by this kind of a future system. So semiconductor design, testing, and verification are all places where AI might step in. All right, but if you're sick of talking about hardware that's actually physically hard like silicon, let's talk about brain-derived similar AI that we call wetware. So researchers from Osaka and Hokkaido University are pioneering the development of neomorphic wetware, which is a type of artificial neural network that more closely resembles a biological system. So they're building these like three-dimensional brain-like structures because they're hoping that they can break past some of the limitations that we have now with silicon AI software. So just the way that things become exponential in nature and the way that like hardware and silicon work right now, when you get neural networks with more and more parameters as they scale up, they become quite difficult and very expensive to train. Training models like GPT-4 can cost hundreds of millions of dollars. But these researchers demonstrated the potential of building a 3D polymer network. I'll unpack that. So the polymer is like a big sponge kind of, it's like a goo that things can grow in. And yes, this is actually grown. It's not just like you place it in there strategically. Like it's actually like blah, blah, blah. And you end up with these little dots that have a network of polymer wires attaching to each other, which is very similar to how we have neurons, the little dots. And then we have our axon connections, our axon dendrite little thing. This actually grows, it's a little polymer wire. Now the little dots are technically called electrodes and they can be controlled with electrical impulses. Remind you of anything? Your mind. So the plan is to train the neural network by doing little frequency volts, like boom, 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 boom. And you just, the pattern that it goes through in the same way the pattern of electricity goes through our head is how you can tune the neural network. Being honest, I don't know why, but there's something about building the 3D sort of gel-like brain, you know, spike kind of thing that makes me freaked out. Now this wetware model was shown to be capable of unsupervised learning. Now it was a little bit different because it used something called neuronal spike-based learning, not normal like back propagation and gradient descent that we're used to, suggesting that we're getting much closer to the mimicry of a biological system to create an artificial intelligence. Honestly, I don't even know if we should call it artificial intelligence at that point. That sounds like biological intelligence to me. So researchers' next step is to grow an even bigger brain until it gets closer to mimicking some of the human-like abilities that we have. So yeah, we're starting to learn how to harness the exact mechanisms that our brain uses, the same physical structure, and what a, what a time to be alive. If you want more biological-based brain content, smash that subscribe button.